its breath. Praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. It's good to be all here tonight. Thank you for your prayers uh, yesterday when I was down in Georgia. I thank you for that. And I could feel your prayers on the road, and I could feel your prayers at 1.30 yesterday, and I can't thank you enough for your prayers. I took those surveys with me. It shocked everybody uh, when I whipped them out of the bag, and it was such a tall stack. But I thank you for the time that you took to do that. Tonight, as you know, the last Wednesday of the month, we always baptize. But tonight, as we baptize, we're baptizing someone tonight that has been fighting a a very, very courageous battle with cancer. Bruce Jefferson, you've heard his name mentioned at many, many services. Bruce is right here. Keisha is right up there. And, uh, and tonight as we pray for, or as we baptize Bruce, I just feel led. A song came to my mind that my dad used to sing, and I've never, not really heard a lot of other people sing it, but this old song was Where the Healing Waters Flow. And you may have heard of that song, but Where the Healing Waters Flow. We've got water in this baptistry tonight that I'm praying is going to turn into healing water. I'm praying tonight will be a night where when he goes back for his CT scan tomorrow, that they're going to say, it is finished. Not Bruce is finished, cancer is finished. So I want you to pray as I pray and we anoint him with oil tonight. I know you just sit down but I'm going to ask you to stand back up I want you to just lift your hands to the Lord and lift your hands this way so your prayers are going right over Bruce because I just really and truly believe that God can take care of cancer and God can heal cancer he's had cancer in his bones and cancer in his lungs and tomorrow they find out the, the degree of that and the, to me I'm praying when they get the news the doctors are going to be shocked everybody's going to be shocked and they're going to say you're on your way back and you're popping back up and I praise the Lord for him and Keisha. They have really fought a, a courageous fight. They have not allowed cancer to get them down, and uh, they have fought hard. You fought hard praying for them, and uh, I praise the Lord for a congregation that will pray. But I want to anoint him with oil. Bruce, I appreciate you. I love you. This is a Havoline 30 weight. This is a heavy-duty oil, okay? And uh, if this uh, you need more, I'll get you some... Uh, Pins oil, 50 way, okay? But we're going to anoint your head with oil, okay? Our Heavenly Father, before we baptize Bruce tonight, we thank you, Heavenly Father God, for all that you have done for him, Lord God, by giving your son to die on a cross for him. He knows you, he loves you, he serves you. Keisha knows you, loves you, and serves you. They serve you together. They love being in the house of the Lord. And Heavenly Father God, they've had this spell where they just couldn't get here. But Lord God, we know why they haven't been. Heavenly Father God, we look to the outside, but Lord God, you see the inside, not only our heart. You see our bones. You see our organs. You see, Lord God, where x-ray has to go. But you also go beyond x-ray. And Lord God, we know that you can see, Lord God, not only today, but you can see tomorrow in the future. You know exactly what that CT can scan is going to show. And right now, Father God, we come before you because, Lord God, we are looking for the best report they've ever had in their entire lives. We're looking for a report that doctors have never even seen before. We're looking for a report that says that there is no cancer, that cancer is defeated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we anoint him tonight in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, let your healing water flow not only on the outside of his body, but the inside of his body, that this night is going to be a night that they'll never forget because this is the healing night. This is the night that Satan is rebuked, that cancer is rebuked, and it's all put under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord God, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you thanksgiving. 
And we thank you, Lord God, that yet before he even goes before the doctor for the scan, that, Lord God, tonight we're going to shout hallelujah and say, Lord, thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for what you've done. In Jesus' name. Bruce, I'm not even going to ask you, are you saved? Because you show the fruit of salvation every time I've seen you. And I know when you gave your life to the Lord, you meant for you. So tonight, 100%, 100%. And we love you. And you can't see beyond that wall right there, but if you could see behind you, you've got hundreds of people that are raising their hands and have prayed over you. Say it into that right there. You don't know how much it means to us. Thank you. Bruce, with great honor. I baptize you, and with great expectation, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I'm good. His words were, I'm good. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's worship the Lord. How many know that the healer is in the room tonight? His name is Jesus. Can we just give the Lord glory for what he's doing and what he's done, what he's going to do? Hallelujah. Come on, why don't you just lift up praises to the Lord right now and thank him that he is still the healer, that he still moves that way. Hallelujah. In 2020, he is still the healer. Hallelujah. By the blood of the Lamb. By his stripes, we are healed tonight. Come on, if you need a healing right now in your body, just lift up a holy hand and say, Lord, touch me right now. Touch me in this atmosphere where your presence is, Father. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. Cause you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. No one else like you. No one else like you, and you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Come on, just get alone in the presence of the Lord right now. Come on, sing this directly to Him. You deserve the glory, all the honor. And the honor. So that's why we lift our hands. As we lift your holy name, and you deserve the glory, all the honor. And the honor. Every bit of the praise. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we lift your holy name, you are great. You do miracles so great. And I believe that you've done one tonight in this room. There's healing in this house. The healing waters are flowing. There is nobody like our Jesus. You are great.
and sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God you will great you will great you do miracles so you serve a miracle working God here on a Wednesday night in Lynchburg my God can do anything said my God can do anything hallelujah let's just give him another hand clap of praise hallelujah you may be seated thank you for joining us tonight if you're watching tonight by social media we just want to welcome you and thank you for watching. God bless you. If you're visiting with us tonight for the first time on behalf of our pastors, we just bid you welcome. And, and if there's anything that we can do for you, let us know that's what we're here for. Elimination by participation. Binky and Chris Scott. Put it back in. She wants us to put it back in the church, and we'll do that. Thank you, Chris. God bless. The ushers are coming to wait on us for our tithe and our offering. If you'd like to give tonight by using a bank card, Debbie's right back there in the media booth. She will be glad to help you with that. How many of you have a special need tonight, a special request that requires an answer from our Father? He is willing. He is able. And I pray that tonight when you go out of here, you will have your answer. I believe that. Do you believe that? I was also taught not to pray about anything that I needed unless I prayed with expectation. So tonight we pray with expectation that God is going to hear us and that God is going to answer. Amen. Father, we love you so very much. We're so aware that you love us. Why? Sometimes I don't know. But you love us. You love us unconditionally. Your word says that you want only the best for each of us. And I believe with all that is within me that you have a specific plan, a definite blueprint for each one of us tonight, and that your thoughts toward all of us 
is to help us, not to harm us, but to give us hope and to give us a bright future. So tonight, Father, we just come against the enemy who seeks to tear us down. We rebuke him in that powerful name of Jesus Christ. And God, I just pray for each person who is represented in this place tonight. God, that you will meet them where they are. Answer their needs. Supply their needs. You are Jehovah Jireh. There's nothing too difficult for you. God, and we just thank you because you want to bring healing to us. I thank you because you want to restore marriages. I thank you because you want to put families back together. I thank you because you want the best financial security for each of us. You care about everything that touches our lives. Tonight as we worship you in our giving, God, I just pray that you'll bless the gift and the giver. And Lord, as we open our hearts and turn our hearts toward you, speak to us tonight through your word and change us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to Tree of Life Ministries. We are so glad that you are here. If you are a guest or a new member, then we have something special just for you. Just text your name to 434-665-2009 or locate a plugged-in card near your seat, fill it out, and turn it into the offering plate or the welcome centers. Thank you for joining us today at Tree of Life. The VIP seniors are hosting a Paint on Canvas night on Saturday, March 14th from 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Big Owl's Cafe in Building A. This is open to all age groups, and the cost is only $20 per person and includes all supplies and lunch. Registration is limited, so for more information or to sign up, contact Pastor Don at 434-665-7042 today. And please note that sign-up and payment deadline will be Sunday, March 8th. Here are some new studies beginning soon in TOLM's Marriage Ministry. Their new Sunday study, AHA, will begin Sunday, March 1st at 11 a.m. in room 206 in Building C, led by Ken Brumfield. This study by Kyle Eidelman explains that we've all had an AHA moment in our lives, an insight that changes everything. With everyday examples and trademark testimonies, Kyle draws on scripture to reveal how three key elements, awakening, honesty, and action, can produce the same kind of AHA in our spiritual lives. Then, beginning on Wednesday, March 11th, in room 206 in Building C at 7 p.m., it's the Wednesday night study, Kingdom Marriage. In Kingdom Marriage, you will discover the real purpose of marriage that leads to true fulfillment as Dr. Tony Evans guides you through this powerful group video experience. For more information on either of these classes, contact Ken Brumfield at 540-521-4697 or email kenbrumfield51 at yahoo. Dot com. 2020 marks Tree of Life Ministries' 30th year anniversary. And to commemorate the occasion, we will have anniversary t-shirts for pre-order at Welcome Centers 1 and 3. Then on March 22nd, be sure to wear your shirt for a tree shirt day as we wear them in observance of our 30th anniversary. We very much look forward to celebrating this monumentous occasion with you, our members and congregation. So get out there and pre-order your piece of history today. Join Shonda Pierce, stand-up comedian, television host, author, and actress as she channels her life experience into positivity, bringing laughter to audiences around the country. This is an evening you do not want to miss, so get your tickets to see the Queen of Clean live in concert on Sunday, March 22nd here at The Tree, with doors opening at 6.15 p.m. and the show starting at 7. Tickets are now available at eventbrite.com. Just search Shonda Pierce and find the Tree of Life Ministries show. Beginning Tuesday, March 17th through April 21st, it's Dive Men's Ministry at TOLM, inviting all men to their next six-week small group study based off of the book, Not a Fan, taking place in room 214 in Building C from 6 to 7.30 p.m. on Tuesdays. This study will encourage you to explore, examine, and understand what it means to deny oneself and truly follow Jesus. It costs little to be a fan, but everything to be a follower. For more information, please contact Dexter Glass Jr. at 540-748-0280 or visit their Facebook page at TOLM Men's Fellowship.
y'all are awful quiet. Is that, a, is that good? Are y'all excited to be here tonight? I'm excited to be here. Why don't you stand with me? I appreciate you being here. I know through the week it's tough. Everybody has schedules. People have practices. People have appointments. A lot of just life going on through the week. But I really appreciate you being here. It's great to see this good crowd on a Wednesday night. I think it'd be good if we just gave the Lord a hand, let him know that we praise him, that we can come out and worship him. In Galatians chapter 6, I want to share a passage of scripture with you. It's just a few verses, but they're verses that has really meant something to me through the years just because I, I think that a lot of times we get busy in life, we do what we think is really the right thing to do, the good thing to do, and sometimes we don't really see the results that we really have been praying and believing for until there was a time, and even though I always know, I've always known this, there is something about the Word of God that when you latch on to it, it latches on to you. And so uh, I latched on to this several years ago, and I don't know that I've ever preached on it, but what I'm sharing with you tonight is new. Galatians chapter 6, starting with verse 6, he says, Let him who has taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And this verse 9 is really going to be the, the focus of what I'm sharing with you tonight. <clears throat> he says, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season, turn to somebody and say, due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight so that we can get right into this. I want us to remember Steve Poe's sister. He's here tonight. She was involved in an accident. Jared Carpenter, he has a friend that uh, is battling cancer as well. And it's good to see Joe here. His brother passed away, but he knows he's with the Lord. And so he come to celebrate with his brother tonight in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Isn't that good? Praise God. That's right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and just ask Him to bless these needs. If you have one, I know that you've been prayed over. I always, never hurts to pray more. And uh, we're just going to believe God for these needs. Father, we thank you tonight. We feel your presence in this place. And God, we know that you're here. There is such a settling of the presence of your spirit right now. And God, I believe that as I was reading that word, there is something that's going to latch on to a heart here tonight because they are going to latch on to this word, to this promise for their life. And Lord, I just believe that in the name of Jesus, God, before we leave here tonight, something supernatural is going to break loose. God, we just believe in the power of your word to change not only our heart, but our entire, entire life. So Father, I thank you that Lord, you're with Joe and his family tonight. We thank you that you're with Harold and his family while he battles this disease. And Lord, we thank you that you're with Steve's sister tonight. That Holy Spirit, you can go to where they are. You can go to the ones that are watching by social media tonight. And we believe, God, that Holy Spirit, you are literally going to rain down where they are. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. In Jesus' name, we give you praise, honor, and glory for what you're going to do. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory for what you're about to do in this place. Hallelujah. That's right. You can give him praise, honor, and glory for what he's about to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen. Praise the Lord. Find somebody and tell them, say, your season is coming. Your season is coming. 
coming. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Good to see you. tonight I want to talk to you for a moment on that your season is coming Paul when he was writing this letter that was one of the things that he expressed and and uh, several years ago I, I was uh, I don't I, and I know you go through different seasons of life some seasons they seem to go a lot easier than others they seem to be less of a struggle than others than but nonetheless, I, I don't know, there is something about when you're in ministry. You always want to see people get saved. You always want to see people, uh, their lives change. You want to see people to have breakthroughs in their life. And so uh, that's always been my desire. I love seeing people get saved, and I love seeing people set free. I love seeing people be blessed. And so that's always, I've always just really strive for that. That's one of the reasons why usually the messages that I give falls along one of those lines and includes those three aspects of the Christian faith and walk. But there was a period of time when there was just a deep struggle that, you know, you work, you work, you work, and you don't see any results of anything. And, um, you know, my father had always taught me. He said, whatever you do, he said, you just keep working, and as long as your heart's right, the Lord will bless what you put your hands to and he'll bless your life now that is great advice amen? amen but when you work and you get tired and you still don't see any results uh, advice is good and I, I would always watch my father the Lord always seemed to give breakthroughs and and uh, so through time the Lord had done it for my life but there was still a period of time where it was a dry season how many of y'all know what a dry season is and so you're not having that tonight, but uh, we, all go through, <laughs> we all go through dry seasons. And uh, there was a period where it was just a dry season. And, and man, it didn't matter what I did, how hard I worked. It just seemed like nothing was materializing. Nothing was happening. And uh, then I was reading through the Word, and, and I was trying my best to just claim certain scriptures. But when I got this scripture... I told you, I got a hold of this scripture, and this scripture got a hold of me. And when it got a hold of me, it was like the more I stood on it, the more I just felt confident that God was going to give me a season where things were going to turn around in my life. So I want to tell you tonight, I really felt like that the Lord was speaking to me, and he said, there are some that you're going to hear tonight, and, and, and normally I don't, I don't really say this unless I, I absolutely know it, but I really felt like that this is a word for someone here tonight, that your season is coming. Your season is coming, that you've been discouraged, you've been distracted, and the Lord just really brought you here tonight to let you know that your season is coming. You've been waiting for it, you've been praying for it, you've been believing for it, and there's some of you that you've just wondered, you said, man, I've just been so faithful to do so many things. And, and the Lord just wants you to know tonight that your season is coming. Your season is coming. Turn to somebody again and tell them, say, your season is coming. And you got to tell them like you really believe that God has given you that to speak to them and say to them, your season is coming. So tell them again, say, your season is coming. I remember several years ago, Zach was probably about... 11 or 12 years old and and uh and so this gentleman that we knew that I was friends with he was a bear hunter and I'd always wanted to go bear hunting and it was bear season and so he come to me he said hey you ever been bear hunting before I said never been he said do you want to go I said man I'd love to go and he said well if your son wants to go just bring him along and so, you know, I was excited about it. Sandy wasn't as excited, but I was excited about it. And so, 
Uh, it was a pretty long ride. It was about an hour from where we were. We got up at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Here we are. We're driving way out in the middle of, of nowhere. And uh, while we're driving, Zach is just talking and talking. I mean, man, he is all excited. And so... He's talking and he's talking about, he's already read about bear hunting. He's already told me about where to shoot them, how to shoot them, and all this other stuff. And, and then he comes, he gets real serious. He said, Dad, let me ask you something. You ever killed a bear? I said, no, son, I've never killed a bear. I said, that's one of the reasons why we're going bear hunting. And, and uh, he, said, he said, wow, I, I didn't know that. And I said, no, never killed a bear. And he got real silent. And just for a few moments, and, and he said, Dad, I was thinking, You've never killed a bear, and I want you to know, I'm going to let you shoot the first bear that we see. I said, well, well, thank you, son. I appreciate that. He said, I was thinking about it. I got the rest of my life. You don't have much longer to live. And you, you, need to, you need to kill a bear before you die. And I'm thinking, holy cow, he's already ripped me off. And so there's... A, a season of your life. Everybody knows there is a season of life. There are seasons of life. That's why some of you they call spring chickens, and some of you they look at you and they say they're definitely old man winter. And uh, but there are seasons of life, seasons that we go through, seasons that we experience. I told you there is spring. Spring is about to come upon us, and and probably you probably notice like I have that with some of the weather sometimes the seasons one season blends over into another season that went so much along with what I was going to share with you tonight but uh, one season may uh, all of a sudden cause another season to confuse you a little bit and so that's why because some of the weather you have one day and at the end of this week it's supposed to be in the 40s and, and it's going to get cold again and, and then you look outside and you see that it's warm and you see flowers starting to push up out of the ground and buds starting to come on the trees and, and so seasons have a tendency to blend in with one another when you look at Scripture, you see that there are all types of, of seasons in Scripture. Even Solomon, he talked about the seasons of our lives, that there are certain times and seasons of our lives, times that we love, time for war. There are different seasons that we go through. And so I don't know what season you're in, what season you've been waiting on, what I do know is, is that God is always faithful no matter what season of life that we're in. I was sitting there with my dad, and, and uh, he had a small setback. He got a, a, a virus, and you know, when you have uh, cancer, when you have leukemia, you can't get anything like that. And so they had to admit him to the hospital for a few days, and he was in there getting some antibiotics and, and that kind of thing. And and, uh, and I just, I went down there and I was sitting with him and I was talking with him and, and he said, son, he said, I know how busy you are. He said, you didn't have to come all the way up here. I'm going to be fine. And, and uh, he said, but I really appreciate you coming up here and just sitting here and talking with me. And my mind went back and, and I thought any opportunity I would ever have just to sit and talk with him, I'm going to do. I, my mind went back to a time when I was a, a small, well, not really a small boy, but I was probably about 11 years old, and, and uh, it was summer season. And uh, it was, because it was summer season, we, had, we were in this house, and there was a new house that was built beside of our house. And the lady that moved into that house, her yard was new, and, and I wanted to earn some extra money. And so I went over there and asked if I could mow her yard. It hadn't been mowed. They'd already sowed the grass and all that. And, and uh, so I started mowing it. She said, sure, I'll pay you to mow it. And I started to mow it. It was, it was burning hot. It was really hot. And, and the mower would get clogged up by the, the straw bale that they had left in the yard. And so I would have to stop the mower periodically, get that straw bell, uh, the, uh, the, the, the belling straw, you know what I'm talking about, the twine, that's what it is. I'd have to get it uh, unwrapped from the mower so I could start mowing again. I didn't realize it. I had my shirt off. I was getting burnt up. And so that evening when I got out of the shower, there were blisters that come up on my back. They were bleeding. And man, I was in excruciating pain. And all night long, my father 
I, I, I couldn't sleep. I was crying. It was, it was painful. But all night long, my father sat there beside of me. And every time I woke up, I felt him stroking my head. And he would say, Lord, I just plead the blood of Jesus over Ray. I just believe that you're going to heal this back. I believe that you're going to touch him. And man, my mind went back. Isn't it good when we have a faithful father that is watching over us, always there for us, no matter what season we're at in life? You can be through one of the worst seasons of your life, and God is always there. Hallelujah. God is always there. My goodness, you need to give God a praise for that. You believe that. When you look at Scripture, you have to understand when they talk about the seasons, there are two concepts of time, and then I'm going to give you a third type of time that I've never seen before until I was studying this, but I've talked about this before, the chronos time and the kairos time. And, and so in the seasons of time, what we know is there is a set time. When, when uh, you look at Scripture and you see that Herod, he went to the wise men, he said, I want to know what time it was that you saw and you knew that the Savior was born. And when he said that, what he was speaking of, he was speaking of chronos time. What time was it that you got this sign? What time was it when you realize this? Tomorrow morning, you're going to wake to the sound of a, an alarm that goes off. What that is, that is chronos time. It is a set time. You may get up, you may look at your calendar, you might see what's on your agenda for the day. You might have a meeting at 10 o'clock. You might have a chronos meeting. You might have a chronos appointment. Those are appointed times that we live by on our human calendar. But then there is another type of time, and Jesus spoke of this when he was talking to his disciples. It's a kairos time, and that kairos time is simply a God moment of time. It's a time when God intervenes and he said, you know, I know you've been going by the calendar and I know you've been going by times but I'm letting you know that this is a time where I'm going to intervene and I'm going to show up and I'm going to show off and let you know that the calendar didn't create your miracle. The appointment didn't create your miracle. I created your miracle because I supernaturally showed up at a God moment. My goodness, somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. You look at the seasons of life. We know we have spring, summer, fall, and winter. And in all of those times, I want to let you know when Paul says this, he touches on this when he talks about whatever a person sows, he also reaps. He says if you sow of the flesh, you know what's going to happen? You're going to reap corruption. Or another word that is used there is decay. In other words, if you sow of sin, guess what? Your life is going to fall apart. You sow of sin, nothing is going to work out. You sow of sin, things are always going to end up at a dead end street. But then Paul says there is another way that you can sow. If you sow in the Spirit, you're going to experience life. If you sow in the Spirit, the Spirit is always going to be with you. And when you walk through life, it doesn't matter how bad things get. The Holy Spirit can turn it around. The Spirit of God can intervene. And the Spirit of God can make up the difference. The Spirit of God can bless even in a season when it seems like things are falling apart. You can experience life. Hallelujah. And he even says this. He says, I'll tell you how adamant I am about this because some people think that they can sow of the flesh and still get by. And he says, God will not be mocked. You will not bypass. I'm going to say that again. You will not bypass certain things in life. And the reason why Paul was writing this was because he was writing to the church of Galatia. And when he was writing to the church and the people of Galatia, this is what was going on. They had experienced salvation. They had got saved. They knew who Jesus Christ was. But in the process of getting saved over time, the experience of salvation was set aside. And then they started following, following the ritual rules of religion. And their focus become on baptism 
and membership. And so when Paul was writing this, he said, this is the problem that I have with you Galatians. What y'all were doing is you're becoming church members. You're getting wet, but you aren't experiencing the life of Jesus Christ that really changed your life when you come to know him. So if you aren't careful, what's going to happen is you're going to end up worse than the way that you were before you ever come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because you're mocking God every time you get saved and you come to church and you worship and praise God, but then you go back to the way that you were. And God is saying, you need to be free. Hallelujah. You need to be free from the life that you live to experience the life that God can give. Hallelujah. My goodness, give God praise in this place. If there's one person that I've always admired when it come to time and seasons, it was a man by the name of Simeon. And if you go in Scripture and you can look him up, I think it's in Luke chapter 2, and you see that here is a man that, and I love this, I, I love the story, I like to go back and read it, you know, it doesn't matter if it's Christmas time or not, but I love the account of Simeon. And so here he is, he's working in the temple, and at some point, Scripture says, the Holy Spirit spoke to him, and he said, Simeon, you are going to stay alive, you are not going to die until you see the Messiah. And so Simeon, he's going along. Every day he's working. Every day he's serving. Every day he's just doing his thing for God. And in one day, the Holy Spirit speaks to him and he says, Simeon, I want you to go to the temple right now. Now, Scripture says and talks about Simeon and his life. Theologians say this, that Simeon was blessed with a very, 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 very long life. He was between 150 and 200 years old. That's a pretty good life, isn't it? Here he is. He's been serving all of this time. At some point, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, I'm going to tell you, Simeon, because you've been faithful because you've been wanting to serve me, because you've been wanting to see me, because you've been wanting to honor me and bless me. I got a promise I'm going to lay on your life. I'm going to tell you, Simeon, before you die, you're going to see the Messiah, the one that's going to save the world, change the world, bring the gospel to the world, and give eternal life to the world. And so here Simeon is, he's going about his day, and the Bible says that the Holy Spirit spoke to him. And when the Holy Spirit spoke to him, he says, go to the temple right now. So Tim, Simeon drops everything that he's doing. He goes to the temple, and when he walks into the temple, there is Mary and Joseph and Jesus. And when he sees Jesus, he says, my goodness, now I can just go ahead and die. Because I'll tell you what happened. In the chronos of time and in the kairos of time, God has brought his promise on my life. Hallelujah. I want to tell you tonight, if God has given you a promise, I'm going to say it again. If God has given you a promise and you think that your season is about over, I'm telling you here tonight, God brought you here tonight to let you know if he has to extend your life to make the promise happen in your life, it don't matter. God will bless you with more years to see that the promise he gave you comes to pass. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. See, it's the chronos and the kairos that come together and bring about what's called the due season. Turn to somebody and say, a due season. The due season. It's the season. And this is different than other seasons that is described in the Bible because the due season is a strategic season. It's a special season. How many of you are ready for a special season? A strategic season. It, 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 it even says that it's a critical season. 
In other words, when there are certain turning points in our life, when there are certain things that has to happen, when there are certain parts of our life where something has to come together to make something else happen. That's what he's talking about, a due season. It is the time where time and timing come together. So when Simeon walked into that temple, time and timing come together to make the promise happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, what we don't want is we want God to work on our timing. And God is saying, no, time and timing have to come together if you really want to see my promise come alive in your life. I can imagine when Simeon saw the Lord, and you probably are thinking what I'm thinking, well, how much longer did he live after he saw the Lord? Can I tell you here tonight, I would rather live my whole entire life waiting for one moment of seeing what God promised me than to flounder around and miss the promise that God had for my life. That's what God is letting you know tonight. What we want to do is we want to take a shortcut. Come on, y'all know what shortcuts are. We want to take a, a shortcut. Right. I like what this one version says. It says, don't look for shortcuts with God. He says, the market is flooded with surefire, easygoing formulas for a successful life. Turn to somebody and say, don't look for shortcuts. And I'll tell you why. Everybody wants the easy way to the blessing everybody wants the easy way to the experience everybody wants the easy way to experience something great with God I remember one time there was this couple that came into my office I love being here now because now I can talk about people from another church <laughs> now I'm thinking with you so that way you're not sitting there I wonder who I wonder who he's talking about there was this couple one time, they came in and they sat down in my office. They just got married, been married about six months. And they'd been married before. And they were uh, probably around 40-ish. Around and they said, and in the premarital counseling, I was going through it with them. I said, now, listen, you're going to face this. And you're, oh, Pastor, I tell you what, we know, we've been there. The Lord sent this beautiful woman into my life. It is going to be, I'm peaches and she's going to be cream. Amen? <laughs> and now it's going to be smooth sailing. On, Hallelujah. Six months after they were married, they come into my office. They said, Pastor, man, we are struggling. I said, you're kidding. I can't believe peaches and cream. <laughs> I, 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 I can't believe peaches and cream is struggling yeah we're struggling they said we need your help this is going on this is going on. I said let me explain something to you I said just because you've been married just because you're at a place in life you still have a six month marriage if you would have come in here two years from now you know what you would have a two year marriage and the reason why I'm telling you this is because you can't bypass certain processes to experience the real blessing of the covenant that God is giving you. It's the same with our season. Somebody come to me one time, they said, Pastor, we're out of here. We're going to Florida for the winter. And then they come back, they said, man, we're ready to work. I said, really? You done missed a whole season. And that's what we want to do. We want to bypass certain seasons. We want to go around certain seasons. And God is telling us tonight, you can't shortcut through the season. There are certain things that you have to go through through the process because what you sow in this season and what you do in this season is going to have a bearing on the next season that comes. 
So you better be in this season and stay right here in this season until that season is over and then you can move to the next season. But don't bypass the season. I've seen in the past where the Lord would show me and I would, I would look at it. Some people, they would say, man, I hate summer. And, 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 and they would say, I hate summer and ministry in the summer because everybody goes on vacation. And then you'd hear them they'd say, man, I, I hate ministry in the winter because it's cold. And then they would say, I hate ministry in the fall because everybody's headed to the mountains. I hate ministry in the spring. Everybody's on spring break. And I want to say, you just hate ministry, don't you? <laughs> and what I found out is, God is in every single season. He created the seasons for a reason. And Paul even said this to the Philippians. He said, he who began a good work is faithful to complete it. He doesn't stop because a season stops and another season starts. The reason why I'm telling you that is because if you aren't careful, you would think to yourself, that was a season where God is blessing. I hope he blesses in this season. God is the God of all seasons. He can bless you no matter how hot it is. He can bless you no matter how cold it is. Whether the leaves are turning or blooms are coming out. Hallelujah. God is the God of all blessings. Hallelujah. And then Paul says this. Turn to somebody and say, do season. I told you about the Kairos and the Kronos. But then there is another time and it's until time until time and the until time is the space that seems like nothing is going on until the time and so when you look at it you say well I know and believe that God has a season for me but until somebody shout until until, until then what am I supposed to do? The until time is the time that God says you got to have faith. That is the time where you live by faith off of the promise that God gave you in this season until this season comes. So when you're over here and you say, well, I know there is a season over there that God has promised me, but what do I do until? It's until time that you keep on praying. You don't stop praying while you're in this time. You don't stop praising God while you're in this time. If you believe that God has a season for you you keep on praying you keep on standing on the word you keep on believing the promise and until that time you keep on praising God not only for the season that you're in but the season that he's taking you to hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah See, it's a due season. i got to hurry up. So this is what happens. I'm going to give you these. Until that time. Turn, my, turn somebody and say, until. until. I told you, you got to have faith. And that faith brings you to the place where you realize that faith waits. Yes, That's what you're doing. Until that season, faith waits waits faith stays put see there are a lot of people and that's why he said let us not grow weary he's talking about somebody who is getting tired of sitting or staying or in the season that they're at tired of the place they're at and so what they do is they say you know what I thought for sure that my season was going to come at the 8 o'clock service I'm going to switch to 9.15 I hear God's really blessing in 915. And then they sit for a while in 915. They say, man, everybody's shouting, but nothing's changed with my season. I heard that the 11 o'clock is really ripping. I'm going to jump on over to the 11 o'clock. 
Well, you know what? It's the same as an I-15. Just a little longer. More information. A little more shouting. I heard they got a Saturday night. I'm going to switch over to Saturday night. You know what? I think I'll start being faithful every Wednesday night. You know what? You got to stay where God puts you. That is the season and the place where he has you. If you aren't careful, you'll be jumping from not only service to service, but from church to church, thinking that your season is somewhere else. And God's saying, I can't bless you in another season when you won't stay put in the season that I put you in right now. That's pretty good preaching on a Wednesday night, amen? So, turn to somebody and say, stay put. Just stay put. Faith waits. And if you're like me, you hate to wait. You get aggravated at waiting. One day I was in Kroger. Y'all know that's where I go. Still witnessing. Still believing. One day I was in Kroger. And I see the 20 items or less. I still like to deal with the cashier. I don't like to deal with the computer. And so I'm thinking, I got like three or four items. I'm making my way to the 20 item or less. In the lane beside of them, the lady didn't have anybody. In the lane beside of them, there was two or three people, and they had 200 items or less. And the lady goes to the lady over there. She says, come over here. And I was running as fast as I could to try to beat her. Because I didn't want to, I didn't want, I didn't want to have to wait. I was crossing aisles, moving in it. Y'all would have been really surprised. I had the short buggy. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the speed buggy. But she gets in that line, and she's holding on to the buggy, and she's taking one item out at a time. And I said, ma'am, can I help you? And she says, you're such a you're such a sweet fella. Yes, if you, and I'm thinking, I ain't sweet. I just don't want to wait. <laughs> and the, sad, the reason why you laugh is because you the same way. You hate to wait just as bad as I do. Faith says, I'm going to wait. And I'm going to stay right where I am until God tells me that I'm supposed to go here to this season. Are y'all with me tonight? Faith not only waits, but then Paul says, he says, don't grow weary in what? Doing. Turn to somebody and say doing. So faith works. In other words, while you're in this season, you got to do something. What do we do? We sit here and we say, I don't mind waiting. God, just whenever you want me to move to this next season, just tell me, I'm just going to sit right here until you tell me to move. No, you got to do something. And when he says, now he says this, he says, don't grow weary in doing what? Good. Come on, somebody, everybody shout good. I'm almost done. Good. So it is also the terminology that he uses of not only acts, of kindness in doing good but it's also in being good there is a difference see when he was writing to the Galatians they knew because they knew Greek they knew what he meant they knew the terminology he was using and it was not just doing good he was saying and what did he say he said, whatever a man sows, he reaps. So if you want good in this season, you better be good in that season. Come on. Y'all got awful quiet when I said that. Faith works. And we know that faith without works, it's dead. Turn to somebody and say, faith works. This is the last one. Faith watches. So in other words, 
when you're in this season, you say, Lord, I know that you have a new season coming for me. So I'm going to keep one eye on this season, but I'm watching the next season that's coming. Because I believe if you ain't in this season, if you ain't going to, if the promise ain't in this season, it may be in the next season. How many of you know you don't look back at a past season? You keep looking forward. You live where you are and look to where you're going. That's why he said, he said there, there at the end times there is going to be birth pains. And he said, what you got to do is you got to realize that's the season that you're in, but you keep one eye on the sky. Hallelujah. Because there is another season that is coming that's going to lead to everlasting life. Faith always watches because it believes that God is still going to bring the season at any given moment. Hallelujah. Come on. He said, and he said this, he said, don't lose what? Heart. And the reason why he said that is because he knew, he knew, just like with Simeon. Man, imagine all the times he would get up and he would go to that temple and he would think to himself, man, it's springtime. The flowers are coming out. It's a beautiful day. This this could be the day that I see the Messiah. This could be the season. Spring comes, the flowers are out, and then spring gives way to summer. Simeon gets up, he says, man, what a beautiful day. Summer, it's hot, but you know what? This is a new season. This could be the day. This could be the season. Fall comes, the leaves change. Man, the leaves are beautiful. Seasons are changing. A little bit of a coolness in the air. Man, this could be the season. Autumn is here. That would be a great time. Fall, fall harvest. That would be a great time for the Messiah. Cold. All of a sudden it turns cold. Winter season. Simeon gets up. And he's thinking to himself, man, it is cold outside. But you know what? That would be a great time for the Messiah to show up. Right in the coldness of everybody's life, the Messiah, the Son of God, shines on our lives. Not only do seasons pass, but all of a sudden this man that started out when he was young, and he went through the spring of his life, he went through the summertime of his life. He went through the fall of his life, and now he's in the wintertime of his life. But there was something he was still doing in every season. He was watching. Could this be the season? Faith always keeps you watching. Faith always keeps you watching. Faith will cause you to get up in the morning and look outside and say, man, could this be the day? I'm watching, Lord. Could this be the day that either my promise happens here or my promise takes place up there? Either way, my promise is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. My goodness. Thank you, Lord. This is what I do know. And he said this. He said, we shall reap if we don't lose heart. This is what you're going to be tempted to do. You're going to be tempted to want to give up. That's why he put that in there. And the reason why the Lord brought you here tonight is just to say this word to you. Don't. Whatever you do, don't. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Don't, don't quit praying. Don't quit praising. Don't quit believing. Don't quit working. Don't quit watching. Don't quit. Don't. 
Some of you are just right in the edge of the season that's bringing your breakthrough. And you wonder why this season has been so hot. You wonder why this season has been so cold. You wonder why this season so many changes took place. This season, you were fooled. You thought for sure it was going to be this season. You feel let down. God says, no, no. You need to stay right where you are. I want to tell you this tonight. It's very possible. Will you just bow your heads with me? Very possible that someone here You've been thinking about leaving church and going to another place. And God says, you better not leave. Your season is right here. You better stay put. You better stay in place. This is the place for your season. Some of you, you've just grown tired of waiting, discouraged at waiting. Some of you have worked and worked and worked and you're tired. Some of you have quit watching. You let the last season distract you. You let feelings distract you and emotions distract you. And instead of your head up, your head is down. Instead of looking out, you look around. Instead of looking up, you're looking down. God says the reason why you're discouraged and distracted is because you've quit watching for me to bring your season to pass. Now listen, I want to ask you here quickly, Heads bowed and eyes closed. You say, Pastor, I'll admit, the last season, I sowed some corruption. And I want to be done with that season of my life. And I want to come into a season of everlasting life. And if God will stop that season of my life, I want to tell you tonight, it's not a matter of if God will. I can promise you He will. If you give your life to Christ, you get a brand new life and the seasons start all over again. You get a new life, new seasons. You say, I don't know Christ as my personal Savior, but I want to know Him tonight. Quickly, I want you to raise your hand. If that's you here tonight, quickly raise your hand. Anyone in this place, I'm looking around. Anyone, praise the Lord. You say, I don't know the Lord. I need to know the Lord. I'm going to take one more look. Anyone here tonight? I don't want to miss anyone. Thank you, Lord. If you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I admit, I haven't been watching for my season. I've, I've become distracted. I've become discouraged. And tonight the Lord is getting my eyes back on the season of my life and the season of the life that he has for me. And I just need prayer tonight. Quickly, I want you to raise your hand in this place if that's you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Anyone else? Thank you, Lord. Pastor, I'll admit, I haven't had the faith and I haven't been working it. I, I, I just, I've just been sitting around waiting for a season and I realized that if, if I'm going to experience blessing in the season to come I got to get busy in the season where I'm at and pastor I admit by raising my hand that I've grown lazy and I need to get to working because I want to see my season come to pass in my life quickly if that's you I want you to raise your hand God bless you I'm so proud of you anyone else God bless you thank you Lord thank you God bless you anyone else thank you father Pastor, I'm going to admit I did not have faith to believe that the season is going to come to pass. 
And the reason why is because I've been thinking about leaving, I've been thinking about jumping, been thinking about traveling, because I haven't had any indication that God is going to bring it to pass. And tonight, I just need to say, Lord, forgive me. I'm going to stay put. I'm going to stay steady. I'm going to stay strong. And I'm not going to move until God tells me it's time to move from the season where I'm at. Quickly, if that's you, I want you to raise your hand. Thank you. God bless you. Come on, anyone else? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. The last one. Pastor, I know that God has a season for me. And tonight, I'm just believing that He's going to take me to the place. Give me the promise. I've been faithful. I'm going to admit, I'm ready. I need it. I want it. I'm ready for the season that He has for me. If that's you tonight, quickly, just lift your hand. That's right. Thank you, Lord. He's going to play. He's going to sing. And as they do, if you raise your hand, I want you to come to this altar. I want you to come to this altar, and I want you to tell the Lord, if it's, Lord, forgive me for being lazy. Lord, forgive me for thinking about moving. Forgive me. Lord, I'm ready for my season. Whatever it is, if you believe your season is coming, this altar is open if you raise your hand. Everyone stand as he sings. Come to this altar. Thank you, Lord. Doesn't 